Welcome back, welcome back to Afama's Media, this breakfast show. And as I said yesterday, I never walk alone, so I'm joined by none other than... Mwakio Robert. Uh -huh. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. How is your morning? My morning is good. Mm -hmm. uh, I woke up well, mm -hmm. thank God. Mm -hmm. Everything is fine today. Uh -huh. a, a nice Tuesday. Yes. Yes. I, I, I said Wednesday, so I think uh, in the, <laughs> when I was in the uh, your, your work is, your brain is yes. working overtime, eh? <laughs> yes, I'm working overtime. That's why I, I needed just a, a cup of coffee, uh, strong coffee. Uh, I, I, I always sell people coffee, man. You know, try to limit yourself to most three coffee, coffees per day. Three cups of coffee? Yeah, for, okay. for, for the sake of your health, your heart, it's and that your good? body. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> don't, okay. Don't and drink too much caffeine. Don't uh -huh. uh, don't uh, get don't let your body get used to very strong caffeine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if you see, uh, if I take three cups of coffee, and right now I'm saying Wednesday and it's Tuesday, mm -hmm. don't you think I'll say Friday instead of Wednesday? Yeah, I know. Or Saturday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. I, I'll just fast track. Yeah. yeah, so uh, today we just want to, before we get to soil degradation, we just look at the newspapers. And uh, something interesting we have in our inset today, uh, we have Kenya Startup, and this is a company that is making pre-cooked uh, pre legumes, dried legumes and beans and ndengu, mm. green grams. Mm. Yes. Yeah, it's, do, do you know how legumes are very important not mm. only to the soil mm -hmm. but also to to human health? I mean, mm -hmm. the nutrition we get from legumes very high protein, things like soya, mm -hmm. you know, beans, those are nitrogen fixing. So if they are pre cooked and just packaged, mm -hmm. are they are, do they maintain their nutritional value at that point? Yes, because yes. They're saying that um, they are working with Calro mm -hmm. and uh, they have new vari varieties of green grams and beans, mm -hmm. which are of higher nutritional value mm -hmm. and they are pest resistant and suitable for arid and semi arid areas. And you know, when we hear pest resistant, we quickly shift to GMO. And uh, that is uh, another different topic, but we don't want to dwell with that. Because, because this, this uh, word GMO should not cause, uh, it's not supposed to cause uh, issues, or it's not supposed to create controversies every mm -hmm. time we talk about it, because uh, it will reach a time where we, we have no option but to embrace GMO. It will reach a time, and mm -hmm. mark my words. <laughs> <laughs> we, will, we will replay it and see uh, what Dr. Makio said. Mm. Uh, he, he said that they, 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 there will come a time. There will You're come foreseeing a time. it. Yeah. You're foreseeing there will come a time really? where we will not. There's no way we're going to. Uh, <laughs> there's no way we are going to stop mm -hmm. or we are not going to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, say that uh, we're no longer going to look at uh, GMOs as a. As a as something that is dangerous. So mm -hmm. we have to be very, to embrace, like uh, I tell to people, be open embrace minded. technology, open mindedness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to be open minded. And actually, uh, this company is saying uh, it is called uh, Nature Lock Foods. And they're saying that they're having quite a challenge convincing farmers to to grow these breeds on, on a large scale because they fear they might fail to get the market. And right now, you realize that this company is cutting off the middlemen. So it goes directly to the farmer, buys the product, and they come and they pre-cook it and pack it. Yes, so now they're yes. trying to convince the farmers to grow these varieties they have uh, in large scale. But yeah. the farmers are, are, are feeling, they're, they're, they're getting some resistance from the farmers. Of course, you know, there, there's a problem with Kenyans uh, accepting change. That's mm -hmm. a big issue with Kenyans, you know. Mm -hmm change anything that is change we know we take that uh, one step behind and take a look mm -hmm. and see how you know how it's going to to affect you mm -hmm. see you remember i keep on uh, talking about the story of quails when yeah. something goes when people feel like it's going to be a very nice economic opportunity mm -hmm. we all go all there jump in all of us and, yes uh, <laughs> like the issue of the quail eggs yes, <laughs> we were talking the quail about eggs last and, week yeah so uh -huh. it's it's the back Sit kind of look where we look at things, we take a back seat and see how things will work out. If it works out, mm -hmm. that's when you'll see people, people remove money from which fixed, quarters. A fixed lock account. Yes, and somebody. Start investing without even doing uh, research. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, you'll do that, they'll go full, full throttle. You mm -hmm. know. 
yeah that is the, that's the kenyan for you or that's the african farmer for you wow and again uh just looking at another one we have the ministry of agriculture governors uh and council of governors they have pledged to enhance food production and they're saying that uh the price of a 90 bag of kg uh kg of maize the CS for agriculture wants to reduce it to 1,400 Kenya shillings because right now it is being sold at between 5,400 and 5,800. So it's going to be, he wants it, to It be reached 5,000? Yes. Wow, last, last I checked it was about 3,000. <laughs> yes, right uh, now. I can imagine what uh, those people are going through. <laughs> yes, uh, he's saying that the prevailing prices for a 90, bag, a 90 kg bag of maize is between 5,400 to 5,800 Kenya shillings. But he wants it to be reduced to 1,400. Yeah. Is it a, workable? It is workable. Is but it now, logical? Wh where is the money coming from? That's the question. With it's that money? Because the same government was talking about mm -hmm. cutting subsidies. Yes. Those funny, funny subdi subsidies mm -hmm. that uh, the, the president was talking about. Yeah? Mm -hmm. These subsidies that have been eating on uh, on tax tax payment or mm -hmm. tax money. Yes. So the so unless they tell us where the money is coming from, mm -hmm. otherwise uh, we don't see. I, I don't see any work. I mean, this is going to be a short term solution, not going to be a long term. But again, I I, I remember that uh, there and, was and, a and, and, and another thing mm -hmm. also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? How will the farmer benefit if he's been selling at uh, five thousand? Exactly. That is the question. You see, and now we're being told to be patient, and in a year's time, things will be better. But I, I don't remember that being the promise. The promise was that immediately after the swearing-in of the president, the fifth president, that the prices are going to go down. So right now, we have to wait again for one year. As they say, uh, ground vitony different. Eh? <laughs> ground vitony different. Yes, it's not as easy as they thought. Mm -hmm. yeah. But again, how is the farmer going to benefit from this? Now, you see, I doubt if, if a farmer is used to sell his uh, bag at 5,000, mm -hmm. yeah, which I, I, I'm, I'm surprised because I knew it was about 3,400, 3,500. Mm -hmm. So if he's selling it at about uh, 5,000 mm -hmm. and then government wants to uh, buy it at 1,400, you know, that is loss. It's almost 100% loss. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Nothing. They're not making any, any, any anything profit. out of and, that. And there's someone here who's saying that the farmer is not going to sell the maize unless it is extremely necessary for them to sell. But you know that also they, they'll also go to waste. I mean, where will the maize go to? Unless you sell it out of uh, in uh, in other countries mm -hmm. like uh, the neighboring countries, which maize is not staple. You see, the only way we we are going to get out of this maize paradox mm -hmm. is just us shifting our our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Let's not put too much emphasis on uh, on on uh, on e on ugali all the time because how we do we change our lifestyle? Embrace other other forms of other foods. We yeah. we take maize. Uh, we take ugali from cassava flour. Yeah, we can make ugali from cassava. You can mm -hmm. make it from millet. millet. You can make it from sorghum. sorghum. Mm -hmm. We can make it from uh, this finger millet we were talking mm -hmm. about. Yes, uh -huh. so many of. Uh, Arrow roots are mm. there, which always, which thrive almost the whole year. Arrow roots make ugali. Yes. Oh no, I I, I have not tasted uh, yeah, that. Then you've yet. never you've heard of fufu. Yes, I have. Yeah, that is arrow mm. root. Maybe I'll ask divine to even tell me uh, more about fufu. Yeah, fufu fufu, fufu, fufu is made out of not from cassava yams. Plus. Yeah, it's made mm, of yams, yams mm -hmm. and uh, some from cassava. Mm -hmm. and yeah, some from uh, the nduma. But that takes a whole time to make. You know, ugali is just in ten minutes you uh, have your meal ready. Uh, what about rice? If if you if you <laughs> rice rice te, uh, rice is even uh, takes shorter time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> so you said that we need to really change, change our lifestyle. Yeah, change our lifestyle, and uh, we'll we'll be able to cut out some of these problems that we're having because you know the, this maize farming industry is a mm -hmm. million dollar industry. I mean, there are cartels who, are, who have their roots entrenched deep into it that if you decide to cut off a few things, mm. ah, yeah, 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 there people will be destroyed here. But again, these cartels have been there since the 1980s. So I wonder, why, why are we politicizing again? Why are, do we have cartels in the maize industry? What is happening? Because it's called the shift in... Uh, can I call it paradigm shifting, shift? A paradigm shift, mm -hmm. uh, even shift in goalposts, mm -hmm. where... Uh, it's our time to eat. Your time was over, now it's our time to eat. So oh. it's like that shift now. Everybody wants to 
you know, become, to take the, the piece of that cake. They want to have a piece of that cake of yeah. the maize industry. Yes. So, and, we and, that is, and that's where they realize there's, uh, there's money. There's money in... In, in, uh, in maize. In maize. Uh -huh. There's uh -huh. serious money there. Wow. And quite interesting, another one here. And I know that you are an expert in aquaponics. So this is quite good news for you as well. We have a 2.5 billion Kenya shillings project in Kisumu that will re revolutionize the aquaculture okay. sector. Yeah, especially now that uh, people are really struggling. Mm -hmm. The people, or especially the fish farmers, mm -hmm. are really struggling. Mm -hmm. uh, there's that uh, depletion of fish mm -hmm. due to overfishing and other things. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we also have these cage, fish cage farmers uh, mm -hmm actually suffered a, a lot of uh, deaths from the fish. We had one of our, 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 our farmers here called Frida who lost a lot of fish because of... Uh, no, not Frida, sorry. Frida, no, not you. <laughs> I know you lost the fingerling, sorry. Yes. Uh, the fish, the, the farmers who are doing uh, cage farming in, mm -hmm. in, in Lake Victoria, mm -hmm. so most of them who lost uh, their fish actually uh, pondering on what to do next. Lost yes, millions I, I, in investments. I saw that online. Yeah, they lost million in investments, mm. and uh, this is where now the county government needs to step up and look at uh, viable solutions mm -hmm. and uh, embrace and you know process and see what to how to mitigate. You know, mm. you not know, like somebody said, these things like some of these projects, people go get into this project without mm -hmm. any government intervention, mm -hmm. without any government support. True. When things start going well, mm -hmm. that's way that's when you start seeing government. You know. Taking and a look. In yeah. and to Some look. of these initiatives should mm -hmm. be purely, purely uh, government funded mm -hmm. or government supported to help these guys not. You know, like in Kenya, you get into business, you sail alone. You know, you're like you're, you're, you're a one man sailor. Mm -hmm. You don't know how what will happen when the, the winds start blowing. Mm -hmm. You yeah. don't even have an exit plan for yeah, you don't that have an specific So business. you struggle alone, you mm -hmm. suffer alone, you mm -hmm. endure losses alone, mm -hmm. and that is and unfortunately you have the government. It's supposed to see your back, mm -hmm. to watch your back, mm -hmm. which which it doesn't. It's very yeah. uh, very. And then, funny enough, I have people who work in the government, uh, friends and mm -hmm. uh, former classmates. Mm -hmm. Them, on the other hand, say it's the people who don't reach out to the government. They want to do their things blindly without, <laughs> without uh, getting any consultation from so, the government. So how is someone supposed to reach the government if they're really struggling I with can their own you, I investment can, already? Trust me, I can even give you, uh, <laughs> I can even show you, there are some of these extension uh, service uh, workers from the government mm. who won't pick up your phone. You'll call them, they mm. look at your phone, they don't pick it. So how is supposed to how is a small scale farmer supposed to get hold of that specific ministry if go, they're not even walk working? to their office. Walk to their office. Uh -huh. Go there, tell them I need this service. Uh -huh. If you can't tell us live on our faces, mm -hmm. eh, we are we are sorry we cannot. So that we can go to the central government mm -hmm. and say those people cannot do it. Yes. Can the central government do it? Yes. If they can't, uh -huh. we say, Sawa, we are alone. Mm -hmm. To Mejaribu, Imeshindikana. To Menda, to uh -huh. Mejaribu. You document it, actually. Mm -hmm. If you go to the office, mm -hmm. even tell the secretary, can you sign for me here that I came? I tried to meet the, the fisheries uh, expert, but he wasn't there in the office today. Kindly sign for me here. He signs. You come back the following day. If he's not there, mm -hmm. he signs. Mm -hmm. So the next time you have uh, stakeholders meetings, mm -hmm. they come there and then you just say, them. you see, we've been coming to your offices. Nobody is there. But you see, I, I, I also feel like the farmers get tired of that going to the office again and again of and course. again because you're being turned down. Of, of course. And, so and if I'm being turned down and I really want, I have my fingerlings and they have to be taken care of. I go to the Department of Fisheries and there's no one there. And they're not even willing to sign that document. Do you trust me, do you know there's a time I went to Kilimo House mm -hmm. in, in search of some information mm -hmm. when we wanted to start duckweed. Mm -hmm. I went and asked... Duckweed, what is it? Duckweed, Azola. Azola and duckweed. Yes, Azola family. Yeah. Yes. So me, I specialize much in duckweed, not Azola. Mm -hmm. Duckweed. Uh, so duckweed, I went and asked about duckweed and... Uh, Trust me, nobody in that Kilimo, that sector of the Kilimo house mm -hmm. had gone to, mm -hmm. knows anything about duckweed. That was in 2015. 
I went. Is there no department? Is there no one specified to do the research? This is upcoming. This is upcoming. This is what our farmers are doing. So. No, you know, it's. It, I don't know what really. By that time, 2015, not much. So not so many people had known much about uh, oh, duckweed duck farming. Yes. And when I went there, I told them, you know, I want to specialize in duckweed farming, and mm -hmm. I want to see if I can be able to. They were like, we do not know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, I want to go. I want to see if the government can support in this journey. Mm -hmm. like the only way we can support you is probably. In uh, providing for you transport, you know, go or give you giving you uh, some farmers extension service uh, uh, s uh, specialists. Mm -hmm. You go there the following day. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows about that. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Atuko andiwa. So that is where the the journey ends. So you have to now stop. Yeah. So imagine if you were feeling that pressure and you have tried. Imagine someone out there. They have. No. Funny, I was just from the U.S. by mm -hmm. that time. I just relocated back to Kenya, mm -hmm. and uh, I was just still comparing how the American government is so supportive. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, if you want information, you can call. I'm, to, I'm not saying the whole. Talk about like the state where I was. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want information, they were yes. ready to give you. They are ready even to work together with you mm -hmm. and fully mm -hmm. support you. So I was having that mindset that I can go there and then probably they can assist me. You get me. the same response as uh, you did. Yeah, which I was a little bit, uh, I was a little bit disappointed. But fast forward, mm -hmm. 2020, mm -hmm. uh, things changed. Things have changed in Kilimo okay. House and people are more proactive, people are more supportive. They are ready to embrace you. I was with some of these, uh, I was, w I was with one of the secretaries mm -hmm. in uh, in a, a live consultation meeting in uh, I think in, in Nairobi mm -hmm. where we had a very good uh, discussion and I realized these guys have lots and lots of information, the policy papers, mm -hmm. the resources are so much, but unfortunately what they were saying is people don't reach out. So right now things have changed, but now again, I'm asking for someone who has tried and they've been turned down. Mm. Fast forward, for you it was okay. Mm. But now imagine for someone who was turned down and they don't know that things have changed now mm -hmm. and they have already given up. You know, like the policies are good. But again, why can they just also go out there and tell the people, we have changed things, you can come and talk to us, we will engage you. Uh, it's quite quite hard to just once a mindset has already been it's been made yeah yes i thought if i if i tell people ah this thing is a snob mm -hmm. yeah, it's already i've already made a mindset i already made yes. a conclusion yeah mm -hmm. so however much you try to change it will take a lot of effort from your side yeah? mm -hmm. because just that mindset and you know uh Negative news spreads faster than positive yes, news. Yes, exactly. If I go tell other people, I tell our, our producer Divine, I tell all the other people that uh, Christine is a snob. Mm -hmm. By the time you try as much as possible to change our mindset, it will take a lot of effort from you. Yes. And most of the time we'll be like, ah, okay, let's see if she's really changed <laughs> or she's trying to get something from us. Yes. Now, that is what's happening even to the Kenyan government, mm -hmm. especially in the field of agriculture. Agriculture, yes. Where people are like, ah, these people really, you know, there's that uh, doubt. Eh? Mm -hmm. we, we still have doubts that these people can really help. Because I do not understand how sometimes you find every... I understand that every county government has a department. Let's say, for example, the Department of Fisheries. A fully funded department. Fully of, funded. Yes. But in that whole area, we only have one farmer who's doing a fish farming. Yeah, because not, not, only, so not so many people are into fish farming because mm -hmm. number one, lack of knowledge, number two, lack of resources. Number three, also look at the eating habits of the people around there. Mm -hmm. Not so many people will say, I miss you in Takula, I'll eat fish here. No, no. Now, you see why Central has now overtaken uh, Nyanza and the Western province in fish intake. Mm -hmm. Because of that paradigm shift. You know, okay. people used to believe, ah, Samaki ni Awatua belongs to Oko people in <laughs> Yes. For a long time, uh -huh. people used to. Mm -hmm. Right now, believe me, you, uh, Central Province is the number one uh, consumers of fish. All the fish from Lake Victoria and mm -hmm. China mm -hmm. get finished in uh, in Central Province. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, you won't, you won't, you'll be shocked. Eh? Mm -hmm. The number one fish that's eaten so much in Central Kenya mm -hmm. is catfish. 
Wow. People love catfish mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so this means that probably the government, the county government of that area, is doing so much to educate. It started people. with uh, economic stimulus. Mm -hmm. Remember uh, when Kibaki's government decided to start uh, fish ponds for, for mm -hmm. people because yes. they realized fish pond farming is one of the easiest and one of the most profitable business uh, somebody can get into. Mm -hmm. Now, once when they got into that, some some didn't perform well, but the others who embraced. There's mm -hmm. somebody in here in Muranga mm -hmm. who's doing serious fish farming, mm -hmm. serious that he supplies the whole of Keno, mm -hmm. the whole of Muranga town, mm -hmm. one person, mm -hmm. several fish farms. Mm -hmm. He converted uh, part of his coffee field mm -hmm. to, to just concentrate on fish farming. Mm -hmm. And he's getting very good support from the Muranga county government. And mm -hmm. by the Muranga county government, uh, other county governments like uh, Kakamega, Vihiga, uh, just to name a few, are really supporting uh, fisheries in mm -hmm. their counties. The, so their counties uh, that if you need fingerlings, they are ready to provide you. In fact, I was uh, I was talking to a client of mine in uh, in Kibwezi. Mm -hmm. I asked her, "Can you go instead of us struggling to get fingerlings from where we normally get because mm -hmm. of the distance to Kibwezi? Mm -hmm. Can we be able to source it within the the region? Because definitely the county government." Your county government definitely has a way. It has a fisheries department. It has. They're supposed it even has. to be doing for you your pond mm -hmm. for free. Okay, I didn't and know that. And people spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands. In fact, I, I will be I'll be inviting one of my friends uh, who's a fisheries uh, expert uh, who builds fish ponds across the country. I'll invite him this week uh, mm -hmm. to to we talk about fish farming. This so t stay tuned this mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's a lot. I mean, we have so many uh, private people who are doing fish ponds for, for for people. So if the government is supposed to even construct and do to pond, give you dumb liners, give you fingerlings. And the fingerlings. Yes. Okay. So if the government is supposed to do that, why is it not doing that? Because we have some areas. Then these are some of the steps we should be taking to ensure that we have food security in our areas. Yeah. yeah. Why is it not doing? Because as I asked before. There is, you find that a county government has that department. But at the end of the year, a financial year, Mine what happens to that money? It goes back. It goes the, back. Yeah. So it should have been used. Probably it is uh, capacity building is also a challenge because are people ready to embrace? You know, you tell people, I want to do, uh, and, and I've seen this I've, when we've had uh, discussions, training, uh -huh. you tell people about how easy it is to do fish farming and whatnot. And the first question people ask is, how much is the food? Where do I get the feed? They do not know that feeds are everywhere. Fish feed, so many aggravates are selling fish feeds these days. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, fish are not like uh, cows or chicken that eat too mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. they, they eat, packet, they exhaust your, your body. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So fish is actually very, it's very easy to maintain fish. But again, I also have a problem, um, Dr. Mwake, with the benchmarking. Mm. If the county governments go for benchmarking in other counties, for example, let's say Makweni County or Machakos has gone to uh, the parts of uh, central Kenya, mm. let's say Kirinyaga County mm. or Muranga County, yes. and they have gone for benchmarking, and they find that those people have embraced fish farming. What is the benchmarking for if they cannot borrow some of these things and yeah, take them I, to I, their I county? Love, I, I love the way you say these people. You ask yourself which people from the county. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you ask, I mean, the question comes yes, in, uh, who are they taking to benchmark? Exactly. Are they taking the MCAs? Yeah, MCA will come and sit in his office, sit mm -hmm. in his car with the information. Mm -hmm. He's not a fisheries expert. Mm -hmm. So why was he going to benchmark in the first place? So this means that... Thank you very much. You have brought that very well. So this means that they also have to select who's going for the benchmarking. Let's say, like, for example, as we are not in the fisheries, in the mm -hmm. ministry, we are not in ministry of uh, agriculture in yes. any county, uh -huh. but we know individual farmers. I can name you farmers. This yes. one does this, this and one does that. Them to where this they one are. does this. Yes. If, you need, if you need fish or mm -hmm. if you need uh, uh, skumawiki or if you need onions, mm -hmm. I'm one call away from a farmer. Yes. Now, fisheries, if it's fish, fisheries, a county wants to benchmark or wants to go and see how people do it. Oh, I went to a place in uh, Rwanda. Mm -hmm. There's this guy in Kigali who's mm -hmm. supplying, you know, 
Rwanda is partially a landlocked country. Mm -hmm. But there's a farmer who's done fish farming in his farm in uh, Kigali, mm -hmm. just from a river, mm -hmm. a river that's passing somewhere. Mm -hmm. He's supplying the uh, the whole of Goma. Goma is in uh, Congo, where, mm -hmm. where I, I told you guys we had gone to also benchmark. Yes. This guy is just doing fish ponds. He's done like in each 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 fish pond has about two thousand fingerlings. He has about two hundred of them. Mm -hmm. Every day, fish are harvested, taken to to the plane in Kigali Airport, mm -hmm. Congo, Congo. He wow. makes a lot of, and he uses, he used to use K KQ, na, excuse me, he uses Ethiopian Airlines. Mm -hmm. So he's doing quite well, because 2,000 fingerlings for one... 2,000 fish. Fish. Yeah. Okay. Pa, 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 whatever. Yeah, pa, pond. Uh -huh. so this guy does about a ton, a, a ton probably a week. That is that that is good money, and this is why I'm still asking, and I'm still concerned for the benchmarking because I hear there's benchmarking. No, and but my I'm still ish ish about that benchmarking, yeah. Why? Okay, who are you taking for benchmarking? My problem is not at least I I, I know there's benchmarking. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the issue of who you're taking that I also I support you there, but don't be ish ish about it. I I am for benchmarking. Mm -hmm. It needs to be there. It literally needs to be there. We need to borrow. You know the way you borrow when you're doing scholarly articles? Mm -hmm. You borrow from here and there and there. You need to do that. But you also need to do that in in connection and in conjunction with the experts. Yeah, I wholesomely I, I agree so much that uh, benchmarking or just visiting our farms is very important. Yes. But also, uh, that being said, uh, we also need to understand the, the basic comp components, yeah? Mm -hmm. For example, you want to take a, a fish farmer to benchmark, yeah? Mm -hmm. he, he already has his pond or her pond, has everything, yeah? Mm -hmm. What in particular do you want to take guys maybe in Rwanda to mm -hmm. see? Yes. If all of you are still are doing fish farming, mm -hmm. what is it that you want to see? Mm -hmm. Maybe a few things like value addition. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see how this person does value addition or mm -hmm. how he does his harvest, how the kind of feed uh, this person gives the fish, mm -hmm. you see. Now, with that, it's supposed to encourage and disseminate or uh, pass out the information to other people. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem comes in why I'm, I was telling you I'm ish -ish, mm -hmm. in this country mm -hmm. and in different county government, the people who are normally taken, I don't know if it's uh, or just uh, or other country governments, mm -hmm. but what I know from what I've heard, mm -hmm. most of the people or most of the budget set aside mm -hmm. for these uh, benchmarkings and uh, whatever you're talking about, mm -hmm are set aside by the county government and the MCS are the ones who pass those bills mm -hmm. and uh, budgets. Mm -hmm. But they're the same guys who go for those benchmarkings. So they do not even take the qualified people. So if they go there, they're just going for a visit. Yeah. They're not going to uh, get the right information. I, I'm yet to know unless anybody knows from the comment section, uh, unless anybody <laughs> knows who, who who's been ever taken by the yes. county government or their county government. We've seen the bus written county government. County or government, we, yes. Yeah, that's yes, brought uh -huh. farmers there. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I believe, I think there are county governments that have taken uh, farmers, especially those who are in dairy farming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one I've seen. But there are some that have never. Because speaking of fish farming, I remember uh, we have our immediate neighbor at home. He has a very, very big... Uh, we used to, when it was being constructed, we used to say it's a swimming pool, and we'll be mm -hmm. going there to swim. Apparently, it was a fish pond, mm -hmm. and he had very, very, very big fish because once he used to just uh, hit the 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 end of the fish pond with a metal, mm -hmm. and the fish would come running, and they were quite huge because you see them just jumping, and they were huge. But right now, believe it or not, mm -hmm. right now it is as dry as it can be. Yeah, no, there are no fish. It do, is just do, that. So do, do you know it's uh, the issue here is how how you you can start. I mean we we also have problems with finishing in in Kenya. You know mm -hmm. somebody starts something very well, so much pumped up, yeah. But when it comes to finishing, like a couple of years, if you're not resilient, you just give up very easily, and that's the issue I've seen with people. I, I think it's what you said earlier about uh, being alone in this business. You're mm -hmm. in this venture, but you are alone. There's no one to support you. So we need like a platform also of people who feel the same. Like I see people on social media asking, 
uh, for those who are going home for Christmas, wale mumefika, what questions are being asked probably by the mother, mothers in law to saidiane kwa hii group? You see, mm, mm. like to saidiane wale tuko kwa hiyo kikundi. I think mm. that also should happen to farmers across the country and True. across the world. True. You get to connect and and you just get to learn what is happening. What are you doing on your side that we're not doing on our side? Yeah, that's yeah, that's sharing ideas. You know, G what is this that you're mm -hmm. doing that I'm not doing right? Yeah. And uh, uh, like Jackie says, uh, some Kenyans have are very uh, very stingy with information. Very stingy. Mm -hmm. Really? Have you ever have you never seen someone with a very nice coat and you ask them, "Nahi, nahi uli nunua wapi?" It's like um. Uh, at you yeah. know, it's not like uh, that I don't remember. Uh, I know, but uh -huh. I don't want to tell you so that you get one like mine. Yeah, there are people who are that way. They don't want to yes. give out information. Yes. And unfortunately, that is uh, the sad part of it. Mm -hmm. But the good, thing, the good thing is we are here. And that is why our slogan says, connect, learn and grow. Yeah, but we're you know, information is free. Yes. We, we tell people, come, get information. Mm -hmm. right? We're giving you information mm -hmm. for free. Yes. But people don't want it. <laughs> people are not interested. You know, yes. some people feel like agriculture is just a part, a part-time thing. Yes. Yeah. Ah, no, no, no. Agriculture is good. And now, as we wind up, just some of the stories we have: boom for Machakos, uh, Machakos County coffee farmers, because a Kuwait-based company is going to start there to base uh, a branch of it in Kenya, mm. and they're going to buy coffee directly from. The farmers in Machakos County. Mm, that is good. Coffee no, no. Farm. See, that's that, that's a, a a very nice because some of these county governments can mm -hmm. have direct uh, links with to the farmers. Yeah, yes. links with the farmers mm -hmm. and links to to funding yes. and companies mm -hmm. and other things outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that that is quite good because uh, the farmers are going to enjoy uh, benefits, huge benefits, because the company is saying that they also they have tested the coffee because. It is available in Kuwait and they like the test, so they are going to support the farmers. And now on that note, maybe we take a short breather, but we will be back. Now we're going to come back with our topic of discussion and that is soil degradation. And of course, we will not be alone. We will be joined by uh, Mr. Ahmed Abdelaziz of Kokoli Fertilizer and none other than Noah Kadima, Mr. Noah Kadima, who is the founder of Afamas Media. So it is going to be a very, very interesting topic you will not want to miss. And that is on soil degradation. What do we need to do? What are we not doing? And how do we regenerate our soils? I am not an expert, but I will be here and I'll tell you all the information and we will get to learn. And as our slogan says, we have said, connect, learn and grow. So stay tuned right here on Afamas Media. See you after the short break.
Welcome back to Afamas Media. And now, did you know that aflatoxins can be found in peanuts, peanut-driven products, and animal byproducts? Aflatoxins are the most potent carcinogens and are known to cause liver cancer in humans and animals. Wow. Um, and uh, and injection, infection severity increases when drought, high temperatures, and high humidity si simultaneously occur. To learn more about this campaign, visit the markup markup unido website we will also be sharing more information on our website at afamas.com more information on our website at afamas.com you get to learn about aflatoxins and also some of these products that are affected by aflatoxins such as peanuts chili and black pepper and soil is the primary source of aflatoxins i bet you didn't know that for more information please visit our website afamas.com and also mark up unido website to learn more about aflatoxins now um maybe we dwell right now into our topic and that is on soil degradation Dr. so we just start ahead with it and we understand we get to know what soil degradation is what it causes what are we doing that we should stop doing and what are we not doing that we should have started doing long time ago and again uh, i'm told that our souls are sick and they are they need to be healthy so how do we heal them and i just i we just get to, as we dwell on this, and as, as I said before, we'll be having our experts and they will help us understand about all this. Now, Dr. Mokio, according to IMF and the UN, um, the least developed uh, countries' economies have been found to experience the highest estimates of soil erosion rates. And this was in 2001. And th that these countries are mostly located in sub-Saharan Africa. And unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, they say bad things happen. Uh, can I say bad things happen to poor people uh, <laughs> most yes. of the time? Huh? Yes. Yeah. Basically, uh, all this all relate to lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. lack of information, lack of resources. Mm -hmm. So many things mm -hmm. are causing all these uh, issues to affect uh, African nation, sub-Saharan nation. Mm -hmm. But they, let, let me make a joke today. <laughs> Talking, uh, talking of sub-Saharan, eh? Yes. I hope, I hope uh, Divine and everybody are supporting Morocco today. Uh, Divine, are you supporting Morocco? <laughs> yeah, I hope, I hope you're supporting Morocco. Yeah, uh -huh. only that I was told that uh, yeah, Morocco does not consider itself Africa. <laughs> wow, why? <laughs> I was hearing a morning show today. They actually wanted to, to join EU, I think, in 90-something, in the 1990s. How? <laughs> How? <laughs> <laughs> and so it's very hard, it's very bad to be associated with uh, <laughs> the African continent, yeah? Speaking of which, I, yeah. I also had, um, I was watching comedy and um, there was someone who was saying, hey Africans, Africans, Kenyans, yeah? they were, they, there was a group of Kenyan and Ugandan comedians and they had gone to other African countries. And so uh, when they got to Rwanda, one of the guys, they were saying they were standing in a line and introducing themselves. And uh, they say, um, my name is Christine, and I am in Africa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so everyone was looking at them and, and just wondering, okay, you you also, and no, he was saying, and um, I come from Kenya, which is in Africa. And so everyone is wondering, my, my, Rwanda my, is also in Africa. My, my cousin was telling me, she, she used to work in uh, Johannesburg, in Cape Town, actually. Mm. Cape Town is very beautiful. You know, if you're in Cape Town, mm. you won't even be thinking you're in Africa. Mm. Tell you the truth. If you are there, you'll think you're in Europe uh, and some parts of Kigali. Mm. Anyway, w when she used to tell people, you know what, I, I, I come from Kenya. Oh, you come from Africa. Mm -hmm. I've never been to Africa. And this is a, this is a South African it's telling. Actually, so a black even their name says a black, South Africa. A black South African <laughs> telling you, I've never been to Africa. Anyway, yes. Even us in Kenya will start telling, uh, because Af 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 Kenya has, uh, Kenya and some of other countries in, uh, in Africa have moved from the the poverty gap, yeah. Mm -hmm. We are no longer a third world nation. Mm -hmm. We are a, a lower middle class lower income, middle class. yeah, income mm -hmm. economy. So we, so the south of Sahara part was generally 
uh, talking about when, when they talk about south of Sahara mm -hmm. or north of Limpopo, mm -hmm. they are talking about uh, very. They are associating it with very uh, bad, very poor economies, mm -hmm. uh, very poor, low class kind mm -hmm. of living, yes. living setters, and poverty or everything related to poverty. Mm -hmm. Back to the soils. Now, mm -hmm. there's so many issues that associating soil degradation to also uh, third world countries. Mm -hmm. Number one is la resources, yeah? Yes. Most, most, people, most people do not have uh, enough resources to ensure that they practice uh, safe agricultural practices, you see. Mm -hmm. Number one, you'll want to just do your agriculture, or you, you do poor kinds of agricultural activities, you expose the soil in, to, to elements, you know, to flooding, and with that, you don't know how to, because of lack of information, you do not know how to treat the soil. Mm -hmm. Some of them do, uh, some of them have very poor management practices when it comes to, to soil uh, practicing uh, farming. Mm -hmm. You find people doing the, the, the clearing mm -hmm. using uh, fire, bushfires, and after bushfires, they, they over cultivate, they keep on cultivating the same crops over and over again. Mm -hmm. But we didn't even uh, mention what soil degradation is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, tell us. <laughs> I know you've done your your one twos. Yeah, tell us what soil um, degradation is. Probably there's somebody watching us. Just yes, saying and they this. really want to know. Yeah, uh, what is this soil degradation? And what try, is our uh, topic today? I'll just try, uh, but uh, we will have the experts who will tell us more about that. But from what I know, I think this is a, a human activity and related to land use and change. And it is the primary cause of soil erosion. No, no. Uh, when we talk about soil de degradation, mm -hmm. degradation, we mm -hmm. are looking at uh, the. We are looking at soil. Uh, soil soil quality becoming poorer and poorer with mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, soil, soil is a resource, mm -hmm. uh, an agricultural resource. Yeah. But with time, the quality of soil that is used for agricultural productivity mm -hmm. actually becomes poorer and poorer. And mm -hmm. when I talk about the quality, I'm looking at uh, a few things that, that we get from the soil, like the nutrients, mm -hmm. the nutrients content of the soil, which mm -hmm. is so much needed, not only by our, our agricultural plants, but mm -hmm. even the normal, even our vegetation like grass, yeah. shrubs, and, mm -hmm. and trees. Mm -hmm. So we also... Uh, as, as the soil becomes poorer, mm -hmm. yeah, that is the word I'll use. Degradation is poorer mm -hmm. as it degrades in quality, mm -hmm. as it comes, becomes poorer in quality. Mm -hmm. uh, we can attribute it to different forms. We have uh, erosion. Er mm -hmm. Erosion is one of the major causes of soil degradation. Mm -hmm. When we leave the soil plain open to, to elements such as wind, uh, surface mm -hmm. runoff, and these are you can correlate it to uh, to uh, poor countries like Africa. Yes. And uh, sub-Saharan Africa, it's noted that uh, the Sahara Desert slowly by slowly is moving southwards. As it, as it moves southwards, they they were talking about uh, in uh, almost a thousand or, or or even less, the whole of uh, Sahara Desert will will cover mm -hmm. the whole of the equator. I, and speaking of which, I now I remember um some time back we have a season in Okambani where it's it's not really raining, but the wind is on the on the soil. Mm. It's so windy. Yeah, the wild, wild wind. Wild just, wind. Yeah. Yes. It's so much, and in a day it can occur so many times. So I remember people used to say, "Hey, mvoi mekuja sasa," and that is the type. It is just the the sandy rain, and it's yes. not really raining, but it's that. So is that also part of soil degradation? Yes, because you've you've exposed the land to 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 elements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to practice things like cover crops. Oh, okay. Having cover crops or mulching, or just mm -hmm. covering your clo crops mm -hmm. using whatever means, yeah. Mm -hmm. By having cover crops, it holds the soil. Yes. Uh, forestation, planting mm -hmm. of trees. We talked about this yesterday. It's part of soil conservation. Mm -hmm. It ensures that the soil is held. That's mm -hmm. where we talked about the baobab tree. Yes, the baobab tree. I'm sure. Why are you having that? Because <laughs> you're cutting baobab <laughs> trees there. Yes. And, uh, why, why should somebody cut. cut baobab trees? You know, it, it just beats logics <laughs> yesterday we didn't even get to finish that yeah, because yeah, yeah. again if if i have to and they're just giving 
uh, let's say little product. And again, how much money do you get from the baobab tree? You get uh, the mabuyu. If we're selling it to those people who five hundred dollars for the whole tree. Mm -hmm. But the mabuyu over years it will give you it will give you the same amount. I mean if you look at it two, three years and you mm -hmm. keep on selling mabuyus. Mm -hmm. Because one packet one packet is a lot by the way. It's about uh, two hundred shillings if you if you go to a supermarket. Really? Mm. I don't buy them from the supermarket. I buy them from the vendor and if we also have one for twenty. See, see, when you when you go with your kids <laughs> to, to the supermarket, you know, yes. and very our children have become they'll go and pick and you want this. Look at the baobab, <laughs> just because it's in a supermarket, <laughs> look at the price tag, you're like, oh, mm -hmm. good Lord, I wish I bought this even outside there. And imagine those things, just they, 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 they just mabu you, they fall down from the tree, and I eat them from, yeah, I used it to is, eat them it is very sweet. I, I, I'll, I'll the share. white one. <laughs> I'll give our producer pictures of me <laughs> taking those mabuyus and uh, because it's part of uh, the project I did in Kibwezi. Ah. I, I looked at the, I, I looked at uh, the, the area and I looked at how how I was comparing the location of Kibwezi with mm -hmm. where we were in uh, Senegal. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they have almost the same uh, oh. uh, ecosystem mm. or environment. They look similar. Then that means I can proudly say I am from Senegal. You can live in Senegal. <laughs> Talk of Senegal. Uh, uh, Senegal lost uh, and left the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> they left the World Cup. Mm. They, they lost, but they did good. Mm -hmm. They did very good. They tried. Mm. I, I can I can actually say that uh, African countries right now they are doing very well in the World Cup. Uh, yeah, yeah. I am proud to be African. I told you, Morocco, I Morocco is in EU. Oh yeah, it's in EU. Okay. <laughs> so erosion is erosion. Now now let's correlate erosion mm -hmm. and third world countries. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of farming activities number one you don't uh, ag uh, farmers uh, the poor farmers don't have access to much information mm -hmm. so they don't know about safe uh, agricultural practices mm -hmm. they don't have resources to practice safe agricultural res uh, pro activities such as building of gabions mm -hmm. uh, sand damming mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, irrigation farming mm -hmm. or not so the people are still doing the Plowing and leaving, you leave it bare. You mm -hmm. know that kind of farming? Yes. Where you plow, mm -hmm. you leave it bare, mm -hmm. and then you, you wait for, for probably a season. Mm -hmm. But not knowing that with this, we are experiencing climate change, which is also a bigger, biggest contributor to soil degradation. I'll come to that later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know our experts will discuss about that. Of course, uh, of course. Climate change has been clearly, clearly um, correlated to, to soil degradation. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, and I hope they discuss about it in the past uh, convention on, on global, global climate change, mm -hmm. because soil, if they are soil experts, I hope they had they put that agenda, yes. because soil, soil health is totally affected by climate change, and it's mm -hmm. a pure, there's a serious correlation. Even a research, I was reading a research paper done by a university in Iowa, Iowa mm -hmm. University, uh, Iowa State University. Mm -hmm. they, have a, uh, they have a concept paper they've written, somebody I think from the university wrote a concept paper based on soil degradation mm -hmm. and correlation to climate change. Mm -hmm. And climate change is also correlated to world population growth mm -hmm. population growth results to urbanization and mm -hmm. industrialization they are all this is a complex web that's interconnected mm -hmm. so how do we we cannot solve one problem without looking at other root causes of the problem so it looks like we are solving one problem by creating another yes yes okay? yeah because from what i understand and i tried to engage some of the uh, farmers yesterday and one of them was telling me that uh I do, I do not need to do anything about soil testing and knowing my soil. I just need to plant and know from the outcome of the product that I have about the soil and the soil health. So yeah. it is about the product because the plant will tell me. If I see, I will read from the leaves of the plant. If this is happening, then I will know that this soil is not good for planting. Then I will move to another area. Yeah, and, and, and you see, it, it's... Like I was talking about uh, this kind of olden types of uh, agricultural activities, mm -hmm. like the clearing of uh, land. You just go to a new place, virgin land. You mm -hmm. clear it and mm -hmm. move, and then leave it. You bush, you clear the bush, mm -hmm. you burn. You know, some old dated agricultural activities mm -hmm. are really detrimental to to the to the health of the soil. Mm -hmm. 
uh, other poor activities like right now people have just embraced the use of fertilizers yes. and pesticides mm -hmm. but we do not put a check on uh, on how it's used you go mm -hmm. just because you know your your neighbor mm -hmm. you don't have a cultural knowledge yeah? mm -hmm. but just because you've heard your neighbor uses uh, this kind of fertilizer and this kind of spray to spray the, the pests mm -hmm. and this one to, to prevent weeds mm -hmm. mama, 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 who tells you, hey, I use this, this and that, <laughs> just five grams and do, not an expert, you go to the, uh, to the, you go to uh, the veterinary, uh, uh, veterinary store, mm -hmm. you buy, you don't uh -huh. even, you're not even given, this money is selling, mm -hmm. so he doesn't care. He's, He's there for the money. Yeah. Uh, this put five in water and go and spray. But again, don't you think that it has worked for us before? Like, um, for example, uh, at home, mm. your neighbor is doing this, so they give you. I even use this, so they give you and you share and you continue. So we are just using, doing what we did traditionally. You because see, we are still that community. You see, when they sell you something, there's mm. that cautionary part they always tell you read. Mm -hmm. yeah, even before you sign a contract, mm -hmm. you always told, tell, told read terms and conditions because it's very important now when you do that with your you share with your neighbor you might even be sharing problems you do not know okay you might uh i i, I was telling you yesterday mm -hmm. about this uh pesticide called the ddt yes which was banned by the uh, by, by by united nations mm -hmm. because of its adverse effect to to the environment mm -hmm. and even the chlorofluorocarbons that are, have been banned mm -hmm. So uh, if we have uh, chemicals like that that go to the soil, and these are villagers who just have access to, to their local, uh, what, uh, what do you sell, uh, the acaricides and pesticides, uh, veterinary? Vet, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You sell, you go there and buy it. Mm -hmm. When you buy this from a veterinary shop, mm -hmm. you put it in your farm without, uh, some of them can barely even read English. Mm -hmm. You just told, put five liters in water, Poor. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't even take precautions of putting on gloves, mm -hmm. put covering your, your your face when you are playing. I I knew we used to traditionally. Mm. You, you know, you like and you don't we follow did cover instructions. So. Yeah, you don't follow. And then when and I was saying this, and when people start dying of cancer in the village, start saying, oh. Yeah. Somebody in our village who's, who's not has seen this village. Uh, there's somebody in this village has seen this woman progressing with her, f her vegetables. Now they want her dead. Yes, uh, or, or you just say, uh, My enemies, you know, uh, even when you're uh, here and you post a picture uh, and something goes bad, my enemies from mm, the village have started. You accuse me. You start accusing somebody you know, and it's your own. <laughs> <laughs> and this reminds me, this reminds me of a story. I was, uh, there was a day I was passing by and there was a crusade. And the pastor was saying, sometimes we as human beings, uh, one Adamu, we blame the devil for things for, for he things didn't we, even do. Uh, for our own stupidity. Know, so he's <laughs> there sitting and he was telling us, you know, uh, the devil, <laughs> so he's there asking <laughs> you see? God, see you this see? one. I didn't do anything, so why is, why is he blessing on me? And I'm yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some, some of those <laughs> blames sometimes are not his, yeah? Exactly, yeah. so we're blaming we're blaming someone for something that we cost. Yeah. And that is why I said we are creating a we are solving a problem by creating another one. Yeah. And now that takes me back, Dr. Chari. Someone else as uh, the farmers I was talking to yesterday and someone else also said I have made my own pesticide from ground paper. You know the paper? Yeah, yeah. That is very good. I'd really even encourage people to do DIYs, do it yourself kind of uh, things. Because some of these things that were practiced by our forefathers mm -hmm. and our those guys in the past mm -hmm. weren't just you know these things were there from day one. So yeah? it doesn't affect the pH of the soil. The pepper? Yes, the ground pepper. I no a kind, kind does not even if it is it does, it's very mild. It's very mild. And you know there's something or oh, there's a there's a form i will share probably with with the with our producer next time eh? mm -hmm. actually i'll just share it as we speak mm -hmm. there's a correlation between ph and also some nutrients yeah mm -hmm. very few nutrients uh like the okay the major nutrients mm -hmm. n p k mm -hmm. thrive well in 
they try thrive well in very in pH from seven from seven pH of seven probably to about eight or, or eight point five yeah mm -hmm. they don't thrive well in acidic soils okay but now by the time you're turning uh land by the time you're changing the pH mm -hmm. of soil mm -hmm. you need a whole a lot of uh acidic uh, I don't know how I can explain it let's say per cubic per cubic um, or per, per square meter mm -hmm. for you to change the pH content of the soil you mm -hmm. need quite you need quite a large amount of uh dissolved oh. element that yes. will will cause it to to become if it is sulfuric acid or mm -hmm. if it nitric acid or if it, whichever acid mm -hmm. you get so I'll, i'm trying to figure out which kind of acid do we get from pepper or cane i highly doubt if mm -hmm. we have any because most of them are purely even if it is acidic it's slightly acidic or if it's alkaline it's slightly alkaline that cannot have a direct mm -hmm. effect a significant effect to the soil so basically if you see you know that's why i say if you're seeing your grandfather's doing a few things mm -hmm. like when cuckoos used to have that uh like oxidiosis or that yes. they used to put the pepper mm -hmm. they get pepper mix it with water put it to the, the to the chicken mm, and some aloe vera so yeah, aloe vera yeah there. some of those things were, were not used by the old people for for no apparent reason mm -hmm. they they had they tried it over years and they saw results mm -hmm. some of these things uh that we are seeing today are uh, are gotten because of research they've mm -hmm. done research and they know these are chemicals that can help mm -hmm. are effective mm -hmm. yeah but yes. our, but that's why we say with some of those traditional methods you just don't put them down the shelves and and forget about them you can still practice you see like I was telling uh, somebody in Kibwezi mm -hmm. of how you can use ash you can use the same ash to to prevent uh, blight blight yes i i see when we used to to do farming or we are planting something i used to see my father telling us to follow him with uh, where we used to put the ash, mm. follow him, so he's just scoop and put. Yeah, even so the ash, ash, even the aphids and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It it prevent the ash is is really um, the ash has some, has several toxins. So you want to mean that this uh, this farmer is actually making his own pesticide and it's not even affecting his crops. Yeah, it's not affecting. It's it's affecting them, the the animals. You know, ask yourself. Something like uh, parithram, we'll know that parithram repels so many insects. Wow. I, I, I am amazed at how the ecosystem works and how uh, we just need to follow something and be, be resilient with what you're doing. Yeah. Because imagine this farmer making his own paper so he doesn't, uh, his own pesticide from ground paper. Mm. And this is quite interesting. Now, um, back to soil degradation. Yeah, we, I, was, I talked about uh, forms of degradation. I yes. talked about yes. erosion. Yes. Mm -hmm. Second one is salinization. Mm -hmm. Salinity. Uh, what can cause uh, soil to, to, to be saline? Mm -hmm. or to, so salinity does not necessarily mean uh, acidic or yes. it can also mean alkaline salty can be either mm -hmm. yeah it can either be salty mm -hmm. okay salinity uh, that means we have dissolved uh, ions from probably sodium or, or mm -hmm. potassium okay. ions mm -hmm. so this can raise the ph or they can lower the ph mm -hmm. what can cause this mm -hmm. i mean you think about what what can cause salinity mm. Salinity. It can be caused by uh, just leaving the land, the leaving the soil, mm. and then when, when water comes, it um, maybe rain comes, it washes off the good part of the soil. Mm. So the part that is left, yes, it is soil. It is tillable land, but uh, the nutrients there are more of uh, saline, so yeah. they are a bit salty. Oh yeah, you're you're very right. You see, like when wow, when, I'm when, trying, when, I'm when trying. That, that's that's uh, that's one of the point. Yeah, when uh, you have surface runoff, mm. you expose the soil. Yeah, it can't. Uh, the water cannot. The water cannot seep through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what happens? Uh, you have the dissolved mud content like elements we have probably potassium mm -hmm. or uh, sodium ions that are dissolved yes. uh -huh. and with with the exposure to probably sun and other things breaks it down into probably other basic components here yeah? mm -hmm. so that might increase salinity yeah? 
or the water the water that the water that is exposed mm -hmm. you know water water um water enhances chemical uh, activities mm -hmm. so probably water can dissolve uh hydrogen uh what the water that has rained mm -hmm. to the exposed land mm -hmm. see it's left bare mm -hmm. water comes mm -hmm. it gets the chemicals there it dissolves mm -hmm. and forms as acid but then again uh it's not like we can we can prevent every piece of land mm -hmm. so is it also that the rain is also a little does rain change and become a little bit salty or uh, no no i mean uh, what i'm saying and then another that's what i'm coming to yeah uh -huh. another thing is also the some of the chemicals that we use as pesticides yes. uh caricides uh -huh. uh, fungicides mm -hmm. uh, some of these chemicals yeah? mm -hmm. some of these fertilizers also mm -hmm. have very high content of uh uh, of these electress yes. uh, these elements mm. that can when dissolve in water become acidic yes like the sulfuric acid mm -hmm. uh, the nitric acid uh, the carbonic acid you mm -hmm. see so this like i said water enhances the chemical activity mm -hmm. yeah by dissolution gets some of the chemicals that we use as pesticides yeah mm -hmm. uh, left exposed in the land the water comes dissolve some of them they become alkaline or they become acidic depending mm -hmm. on what kind of uh, uh chemical that yes. were that were used mm -hmm. you see let's say you're supposed to apply some chemical on the leaves mm -hmm. so that aphids do not come mm -hmm. on it but some of the, the chemicals actually run to the to the soil yes they drop to the soil mm -hmm. when water when rain rains it comes and dissolves it when it's dissolved it becomes something else mm -hmm. Probably it's okay. It might be dissolved, and there's also heat probably from the sun. Heat enhances chemical activity. Mm -hmm. The the sun heat can also break it down. Can help the, the chemical breakdown probably to make uh, acidic mm -hmm. becomes acidic or alkaline. That's w one of the issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All this all this soil this uh, form of soil degradation, this uh, salinization is all hundred percent related to human activities. But. Oh, okay, it's related to human activity. Mm. Uh, basically, that is, is it's strictly on human activity, yes. the salinization. Remember what I told you about that lady who we were we want uh, who told oh, us yes. that her land. Uh, her, she wanted us to do a, pro a project in her land yes, because she did a greenhouse, mm -hmm. and when they did a soil test, they looked at the soil and told her you will never do anything in this soil. Whoever sold you this land knew what why they were selling you this land because mm -hmm. there's no agricultural activity that will happen in this land of yours. Mm -hmm. And because of desperation, they did a lot of research and they had their soil uh, soil free mm -hmm. kind of uh, agricultural practice that they can do. Mm -hmm. So, so, like such a activity, like her activity, uh, the what happened to her soil is that the the military who used to do practices there, they used to you know explode mm -hmm. do exploding mm -hmm. they, they, they do uh they they, they the gun ranges were not so uh, the soil there was really really affected by gunpowder and uh, other activities now um i have so many things that i want to ask right now but because i do we just want to take a short breather i'll be back yeah, but i want to dwell on uh, speaking of that story has reminded me of during the road construction, and this is from the Chinese company, uh, we saw that in some of the areas we have where they blast the stones and they use um, landmines, mm -hmm. is it landmines or grenades? Mm -hmm. And they use that and they build the quarries there. So that has also affected, because the area I'm speaking of specifically, they are pastoralists. Mm -hmm. But now they have shifted to other areas because that area has already been affected. Mm -hmm. So, but we will dwell on that because that is human activity and that is salinization. But we will be back with that. Uh, we're just going to on a short breather. But please stay tuned because we're still talking about soil degradation and I am enjoying the show so far. I don't know about you, but I'm learning a lot as I get to know the human activity and what we do to affect our soil and we need what we need to do. We'll get to do that also at the end of the show, what we need to do to ensure that our soil is healthy. Please stay tuned and keep the comments coming in our social media platforms on Facebook, Affirmers Media, on Instagram, Affirmers underscore media on YouTube, 
Afamas Media and on Twitter at Afamas Media. Please keep the comments coming on that section. This is this, this is, is a farmers a farmers a farmers media a farmers media we tell you the stories of african farmers Welcome back and holiday season is here. How many days down to go to Christmas? Dr. Are you ready for Christmas? Imagine it's the year's <laughs> going so fast. <laughs> yes. Oh my. I, yes. I, do, I do not know how the year's mm -hmm. going fast. But <laughs> thank God. You know the most important thing is thanking God for uh, how far, you know, seeing another, mm. another Christmas, you know. Yes. And mm. uh, you know, things of it's been up and down for mm -hmm. the whole year, but what well, mm -hmm. can you do? You thank God at least you're alive, you know. Now you understand why I was saying Wednesday instead of and, Tuesday. And I'm talking about December. By the way, guys, be careful. There's a new wave of COVID. Mm -hmm. COVID is uh, people keep at home as I uh -huh. make sure you go and do a check. Actually, we, we were discussing that yesterday with Divine, and um, we were saying that we there, there's been reported uh, 
some cases in Siaya County. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, COVID is mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And guys, take care. Mm -hmm. Take care. And that is why we want to tell you about Athi Resort. Holiday season is here. And we know that our families are busy looking for a good place to unwind and have fun. The place you're looking for is Athi Holiday Resort. Now, they offer good facilities, nice food, um, good ambience, and secure place for kids to play. And not forgetting their luxurious rooms that are Wi-Fi equipped. Make a day to visit Athi Holdings and Resort. It is for sure a home away from your home. Now, don't forget to send us uh, feedback about your experience at Afama's Media. Please send us your feedback. And maybe, producer, you can just put the photos back. Now, Dr. can you see that? Yeah. You see the no, rooms? No, no, no. You see the drinks? Just and it's not even far from here. No, okay. no, no, it's not far. Yeah, just, uh, you there's can, a swimming pool. <laughs> there's a swimming pool. There's ah, a conference room. Uh, yeah, you see that room? Pina Colada. Ah, there. yes, Pina Colada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yes. I'm gonna have a conference next mm -hmm. time, eh? Please, we will, we will, we will. Yeah, so nice, please, nice. we can have children <laughs> playing there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now the holidays are here with us. Yes, and you see, it's, it's a home away from home. Yeah. So yes, you want to, you can, you can actually go there for, you stay in your room because mm. it has Wi-Fi. Mm. So it as much as this COVID, please, you can like go there. When, when you go to, let me ask guys, uh. you're going to a holiday, why do you even need Wi-Fi? Sometimes put it aside. No, I want put to Netflix. Internet. I want to Netflix. Oh, okay, time. you're on holiday. Mm -hmm. Like there's a place we went uh, for somebody's wedding. Mm -hmm. In the, it's a... Uh, it's a resort in uh, in uh, near Meru. Mm -hmm. It is several kilometers from the main road, about thirty kilometers. Mm -hmm. From there, you reach there. First thing, you have no signal, no phone signal, internet. Maybe if you want internet, there, okay. there's a room you can get internet. Mm -hmm. But that is specifically for you to unwind. Mm -hmm. No communication, mm -hmm. no nothing. No, if you're not used to this. Tembea Kenya, the places <laughs> where there are hotels where you cannot, mm -hmm. there's no network, and mm -hmm. they'll encourage you, they'll tell you, why do you need internet for now, you don't, you signed up to come here. I, I feel like that is a good place for a retreat, you know when you go for a retreat for probably five days and yeah. you just need to... They say, they say like 60% uh, of, of all, all our, our problems in this century... <laughs> Is this thing called phone? <laughs> phones, yeah. yes. So, um, uh, your phone can change your mood in one second. Uh -huh. so <laughs> if, if you go to Athi Resort, let me let me picture that for you. Uh, Dr. It looks like when you go to Athi Resort, you'll just be in the swimming pool and the drinks area. Okay. Uh, probably I'll be I'll be at uh, the swimming <laughs> pool and uh, I'll be there with the children uh, mm. playing with mm -hmm. with my. Uh, Probably my drink there, yes. yeah, the Pino Calada, uh -huh. uh, an alcoholic. <laughs> yes, uh, I can see milkshakes. Yeah, uh, the milkshake, fruit. milkshake. Uh, probably when it's hot, you know, <laughs> in the Joto, right now it's rainy, mm -hmm. so so you might need something, you know, kahawa, kahawa mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I see that. Uh, for me, I I think I'll just be in the room, Netflix. I enjoy my own space. You know, why why can't you just go home and watch your Netflix? No, because that uh, that is I'm going home away from home. Yeah, then then there's no point of <laughs> having a holiday. You know, the essence of a holiday is to go sit down next to the pool, mm -hmm. talk, unwind, tour all your stress. You know, mm -hmm. leave it, leave the leave your your Netflix at home where you can go ask and Jackie. I I I I categorically told Jackie. Maji imepita ya karai, we do not joke. Yeah, you know what? The essence of going to for a holiday, mm -hmm. so unless now you, you've left your kids and you're worried about them, but uh -huh. if you go with your family, you go, you, you've made sure everything is fine, work uh, is fine, hakuna mtu atakusumbua na kupigia, calling uh -huh. you to disturb your. It's piece of, in fact, you can even just. I know I was reading somewhere where there's a, there are places where. You go for holiday, mm -hmm. they take your phone they, uh, the, uh, the reception there, and ah, that's it. That, that is harassment for on my end. That but but maybe I'll be by the swimming pool. I, I won't be in the water. I've mm -hmm. had bad experience uh, with swimming pools, so I think I have phobia. Mm -hmm. But for open seas, I, I love, I like the ocean. To talk of that, this, uh, this uh, 
this new MP, the, uh-huh. the young MP who went to South Sudan, you're saying he almost, he almost died in a swimming pool. Yes, yes, yes. I saw his story. <laughs> and he was, he was explaining his story, how he almost died. Uh, he yes. almost drowned. Imagine mm. your father. Anyway. Yes. So, yeah. So, at the resort, please make sure you send us your feedback at Afama's Media. Please tell us, how was it? How was your experience? And we'll get to sample as we enjoy. Uh, so, we just look like we just want to go there right now and stop this show, but uh, we have to be here yes. and talk about soil degradation. Yes. Now, back to our topic of discussion. Now, according to uh, FAO, this is the Food and Agricultural Organization, um, Global's, uh, Global-led Partnership, they reported that 75 billion tons of soil are eroded every year. Yes. And this is from arable lands yes. worldwide, which equates to an estimated loss of 400 billion US dollars per year. Yeah, because we don't get uh, production out of uh, degraded soil. Mm-hmm. That's the correlation, direct correlation. So when they say arable land, they mean the land that we have to tilt. Uh, arable land is uh-huh. land suitable for farming, uh-huh. yeah, suitable for farming. So when we have degraded arable land, uh-huh. and you know, most uh, what, what they are talking about, this de- uh, degradation is directly affected to erosion and surface runoff. Eh? W- surface runoff and degradation of topsoil. Mm-hmm. Topsoil is where we have the humus. Mm-hmm. So once we have this degraded or this eroded out, which kind of farming do you do? Mm-hmm. You don't do farming. So when when you don't do farming, you don't have an output. We don't have production. Mm-hmm. We don't have money. Mm-hmm. So that's money that could be converted for forty billion, four hundred billion. Four hundred billion US dollars. That can serve Kenya for quite a whole. That's a whole. Uh, okay, four hundred. That's half, almost half of our budget, of our Kenyan. No billion dollars. Billion. That, that is like that can take us two years in our our budget. <laughs> two years. Yeah. If we if we are looking at uh, probably a trillion. Uh, a trillion per yeah that's two trillion our budget is at two trillion, two trillion. yeah that's so two years 400 billion us dollars that's about that's, that's, that's about four four point five trillion yes lost like that because of soil degradation that is quite sad eh? imagine this is worldwide and this is just from uh i am i'm just surprised because this means that we are we are there's something we are doing mm. And we cannot only blame, blame uh, agriculture. You know, 400 billion can can pay all our, our Chinese debts, Maramoji, yes. and then we start <laughs> thinking of other things. Eh? Yes. The Hasla funds. Eh? Yes. You can now ask for Hasla funds mm-hmm. without problems. So this means that uh, we are, the, the, you told me that Kenya right now, we are low income middle income. Yeah, middle low income nation. We are supposed nation. to, we are targeting to be a a middle income, mm-hmm. middle upper income mm-hmm. nation mm-hmm. by 2030. That's part of the mission 2030. But that, that is only if our GDP changes. Yeah, if our GDP changes and our GDP tra- directly reflects to agriculture, mm-hmm. agricultural output and uh, agriculture and probably tourism. Mm-hmm. You see our tourism was really affected by COVID. Yes. Really, really affected by COVID. Now that mm-hmm. left, that wide gap was left to be uh, to be uh agriculture is one that's supposed to cover that gap yeah because we are we are not we cannot say we are industrialized and i keep saying this you know for every mm-hmm. african country to move ahead try to industrialize mm-hmm. use the opportunity from agriculture to industrialize mm-hmm. value addition can create industries uh mm-hmm. processing can create ad- uh, uh, industries mm-hmm. So many things, yeah. Mm-hmm. Macadamia. But I'm happy because from here, just just as I was driving to Isinia, mm-hmm. from from Kitengela to Isinia, you'll see so many factories coming up. Mm-hmm. Steel factories, mm-hmm. uh, feed factories. Mm-hmm. This is what the nation needs, mm-hmm. and most of these are directly related to farming. So we need more of these tanning companies, leather companies, for for Kitengela maize factories we need so many big glad scale employ people and that is why i was saying that agriculture is not only to blame and mm. this is the overgrazing, overusing of land mm. it is not only to blame for soil degradation mm. now those companies you're speaking about they bring about urbanization because if they're employed in that kind of company they have to look for a house so there's someone there who has land will have to build his own houses mm-hmm. so because of urbanization again 
So we go back to the soil degradation again with the urbanization. Plus, so agriculture is not the only factor that is contributing, also urbanization. Plus, you've heard of something called acid rain? I, I've heard of it, but not really at a professional level. So maybe you can expound on that, acid rain. So, so what happens is there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot uh, these factories uh, release a lot of carbon mm -hmm. to the atmosphere yes lots lots of carbon mm -hmm. so what happens when carbon goes to the atmosphere it mixes with water vapor mm -hmm. when it mixes with water vapor it forms something called carbonic acid carbonic acid yeah, carbonic so acid uh -huh. Mimi, i'll start charging her for <laughs> 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 so, I will. I will I'll make sure that so, um, I well, speak to the HR manager so that they they at least uh, increase the people. salary. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell them please. Uh, once you're paying me, this amount should go to because I have already received an invoice. Yeah. Yes. So so what happens <laughs> is uh, the more uh -huh. the emission, the carbon mm -hmm. emission, the mm -hmm. more the carbon emission from mm -hmm. factories, mm -hmm. the more the carbonic acid. Yes. So the more the carbonic acid is formed in the atmosphere, it rains as acid rain. Now, this acid rain now mm -hmm. affects the whole ecosystem. It affects the soil because it changes the pH. It uh -huh. affects the, the pH of the water because mm -hmm. we are now become having acidic, oh, acidic uh, and rain. And the fish. And the fish. Okay. So the whole ecosystem is affected. Mm -hmm. Now, you can imagine industrialized nations mm -hmm. like China. China, yes. With so many of these. There's a time when the Ch Chinese skyline was just full of fog mm -hmm. that when you're going... Uh, we call it smog, mm -hmm. the smoke with the smog, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. with smog with the fog together, mm -hmm. called smog. Mm -hmm. I mean, you drive in the morning, you see mist, but that's not mist from water particles, but mm -hmm. that's smoke from from industries. So the normal mist is from water particles, yes. But this one now is from industrialization. In industri industrial waste, mm -hmm. the, the the way the the gases that are released mm -hmm. from from uh, the industrial waste, mm -hmm. so that gets into air, it mixes it mix with atmospheric uh, water vapor, now becomes smog. So there's a time India also uh, uh, had that issue. Mm -hmm. So because of that, you know, people are affected, people with, with asthma are really affected yes. with, with that. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine if we industrialize, that's also the, the, the negative effect of industrialization. Mm -hmm. As much as people will get jobs, but what will happen to the environment? especially uh, a very vulnerable ecosystem uh -huh. like uh, ours because the moment we affect we start industrializing like Kitengele is or oh, this Kajiado county is quite mm -hmm. expansive we yes. can have so many industries uh -huh. but what will happen will will happen it will really affect the ecosystem it will affect the lands agriculture activity will be will be really affected mm -hmm. the very good air that we enjoy ukoko ukokwetu Kitembea yes. kitengela tunasema ah tunaskia good air mm -hmm. it will it will it won't uh, serve the purpose now at the end of the day mm -hmm. agriculture will really be affected soil that like we're talking about will be the number one uh, uh, culprit mm -hmm. the one will be affected quite quite most with uh, with this kind of pollution so this means that uh, uh, the industrializations bring about um, Acid drain, carbonic acid in mm. the atmosphere. It depends. We can also get sulfuric acid from mm -hmm. from from it. Uh, with the long term, we saw so it depends the on fluorocarbons also. Uh -huh. So, is this dependent on the types of industries in that area, or is it is it dependent on something else specifically? So long as there's that heat, mm -hmm. you know what happens when you when you heat something. Mm -hmm. you, most of it, most of the time, you get carbon dioxide mm -hmm. from heating. When you get and now this, yeah. the industrialization reminds me of a friend of mine. I have a friend of mine. He's something is swollen in his forehead, mm. and when he was younger, they were living in an area that was had uh, industries, mm. and uh, he, I think, the emissions from the industry. He had something small on his leg. Mm. It was like a wound, and it took years to heal. And even right now, it just looks like a fresh wound, mm. but it's healed. Pro probably it's cancerous, you never know. You know it's, it's, and now there's something swollen in his yeah. forehead. It's like a, 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 a big, a, a big something. You see, it's, it's related. These things are, cancer is related directly to some of this uh, industrialized pollution. Mm -hmm. some, some chemicals, like uh, chemicals, especially the hard metals, lead, 
like mercury mm-hmm. this can cause cancer mm-hmm. and if I'm to advise, has he gone to a specialist to see dermatologist or anybody? I pushed magic. for that. I actually pushed for that to so that he goes to uh, the doctor and he's he's tested for that. Um, maybe they try and do a biopsy and see if it's cancerous or something. Yeah, it is definitely because oh. as the age progresses, it might even become cancerous. Yes. Now, because soil degradation, as we have identified, has so many things. What happens if today we decide as Africa? We are only going to be dependent on agriculture alone. Do you think we'll be going the right way and say we don't want industries because industries also, and if you combine industries, industrialization, and agriculture, then we are at a bad place. What, what do you mean that we are going to do agriculture alone? Because that's what we are doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, I mean, I don't see I, any, any other I mean, thing that we are doing mean, in if, Africa. If we decide that we're going to produce our products and we're not going to rely on the large industries and uh, probably leather industries and all that. Mm. Uh, we decide we're going to do coffee farming, maize farming, and rely on that without so many industries that come yeah, in. But, but, but what, what is, you see, these industries are, are dependent on this the product. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So if we are doing coffee and we are doing uh, sugar or we are doing this, yeah? where is the end product going to? Where is the raw materials going to? Okay. Because we'll do coffee here. Yeah, we have our coffee, our coffee berries here. Yeah. We we'll definitely need a processor. So they, they need to be processed. So what what is the weighing scale? Unless now we produce, we send them to to Europe. Mm-hmm. They do that, and the same atmosphere mm-hmm. is the same the same one that we are having here. Not that the atmosphere is separate from ours. So if they pollute there, they pollute our our, our, our own. Our own yeah. And the the ecosystem is just one. It's, it's the same. Yeah. And the environment is just one. That is why you, you, you saw. That's why you saw how how the world is so connected. Yeah. Uh-huh. You saw how uh, COVID came from one province in yes. Wuhan. Yes. One province. Uh-huh. It took five months. Uh-huh. We had it almost all over the world. Yes, I saw that. But now again, that time. What, what, who is the weighing scale? Where is the weighing scale? Who is keeping the balance? Because we have to maintain a balance here. Mm-hmm. Balance equal what? Balance equal, equal if you don't have checks and balances mm-hmm. here. Yeah? Number one, we need to, we start from very low yeah, mm-hmm. to the common farmer. Actually, in the chain, in the chain of productivity, mm-hmm. or chain of production, especially the one related directly to farming, mm-hmm. the farmer is lowest down there is the one who is directly who's the one tilling the land directly mm-hmm. now if he can be able to look at the effect that's why we we want farmers to learn about climate change because mm-hmm. he's, he's the one who's directly affected yes. directly mm-hmm. if we are talking about benchmarking you need to take that farmer mm-hmm. don't take the mca don't take the mp don't take uh, teachers don't take whoever because they'll have the knowledge and you take it back to to the farmer uh-huh. the farmer is like we we know all this uh-huh. we know it by we hear this but we we haven't seen it because you've mm-hmm. taken the mc as the wrong person to the wrong to person but uh, also, the, the the selection criteria sorry to cut you off but the selection criteria even for the farmers maybe it also might be biased mm-hmm. because it 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 also might lie on the side of who knows who yeah of course i know someone and yeah. that person once they go they will not come back and maybe be in like a group and educate the others yeah of course so they, I think we need to restructure he, he that. It will stay with the, yes. in, with the information. Yes, I That's think the most important thing is to the, we have to have a right channel for the dissemination of information. We have the inverted pyramid. If it comes from globally, then nationally, then to the county governments, then to the small-scale farmers and the groups. We, do we have um, uh, the certain groups for farming? Wamama, wameamua, watapanda, mchicha. And you know it's the chief who knows the chief and the assistant chiefs who know the people there. But you know, with this rotten world of ours, you know, you love to. The chief will say, "What, what do I have out of this?" Exactly. Because uh, they probably are being paid per diem. You know, uh-huh. you're not going empty handed. <laughs> so they'll say, "From these five thousand shillings mm-hmm. that you're being paid per day, mm-hmm. one thousand is mine." Yeah, in itwa ya macho. Lazima kule ya macho. Kusikumbia hiyo point. Yeah. So sasa, if, if the farmer has is uh, supposed to create the balance, what about the side of the industry? Mm-hmm. Because I am yet to 
Th- that is why industries have to go through something called environmental impact assessment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is the effect, the direct effect to, to the environment? Mm-hmm. If I- each year they have to, I think the each year they have to write, uh, sign a report to, to yes. the APR. Mm-hmm. Uh, they look at the environment uh, impact. Mm-hmm. What is it doing? Like in Kisumu right now, I'm being told that uh, the whole city is thinking. Mm-hmm. The whole city is thinking because of the contamination of the lake. Mm-hmm. And la- last time we were there, we th- things were not good, especially to the fish. Mm-hmm. And what we're really more concerned is the breeding of the fish. Mm-hmm. We're not, con- not we don't care much about the big fish, but the breeding where they breed. Mm-hmm. If the fish are not breeding, mm-hmm. or if the fish cannot breed sufficiently. So the, the farmer, the fish farmer is one, or, or the, the fisherman is one who's going to suffer eventually. So need, we need the, uh, the Ministry of uh, Environment. Mm-hmm. Do, do we have a Ministry of Environment? Uh, yeah, land. I, I think it, it, it's in the part of the lands. So it's I know, in that. I think we have, a, I don't know, there's a ministry mm-hmm. somewhere that needs to urgently go to Kisumu and uh, do an environmental impact assessment on, on what's going on there because mm-hmm. it's becoming tricky it's mm-hmm. becoming uh, the moment people start becoming sick that's when you realize there's urgent and as usual in Kenya we wait for people to start becoming sick that's when you see people moving up and down the media will start running up mm-hmm. and down yeah, yeah. so uh that is quite informative. Now, as we end the show, um, Dr. Harry, what will be your parting shot uh, on how we can regenerate our soils or heal our soils? Uh, re- regeneration, regenerative agriculture. Mm-hmm. A few things like crop rotation, mm-hmm. healing our land, planting of legumes, uh, preventing overcropping, no, over cultivation, over grazing. Uh, being being selective and being careful with the kind of chemicals that we use to to do the, the, to to apply to our, our soils to apply to our plants as in terms of our caricide pesticides uh, so we have to be very careful how we treat our soil because it's the soil eventually that that is one that will feed us mm-hmm. yeah Wow, that is quite interesting. And from our end, that is all we had time for today. Please join us tomorrow, same time, same place, as we get to discuss matters of soil. And as I won the show, I just want to tell you a fun fact that um, a god, a, a, a ship has been jailed for three years for uh, killing, apparently killing a 45-year-old woman. Uh, the ship hit the woman, she fell down and she died. So the ship has been jailed. I don't know which jail the ship is going to be held in, but that is all the information we have. My name is Christine Mutindi. Have a lovely day.